This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. G'day, everyone. How you going? I'm doing, I guess, okay. <laughs> uh, you guess okay? Well, All you right. know what? Well, I'm in what? pain. This side of my face feels like, oh. and for the past week or more, feels like somebody just socked me because my TMJ decided to go, hey, remember me? Your, your TMJ is... Lockjaw. Oh, yeah. Right. So if I go too wide, ow, it pops and hurts. And oh. it's just because I apparently ground my teeth really hard one night and woke up with this and it won't oh. go away. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Yeah. So, um, so what, do you, what can you do about it? Do you just take painkillers? Uh, currently just popping Tylenol, uh, mm. hoping it was going to go away, trying to. Uh, find a bite guard that'll work and maybe mm. relieve some of the stress that way. Unfortunately, the one that I tried last night when I went to go mold it, you know, you boil it and then you put it in yep. your mouth and bite into it. And I bit mm. into it and it still was like hard plastic. Uh, <laughs> so, so it didn't it, mold at all. It didn't mold at all. So that sucked. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm grinning and bearing it so far. Do you, Some days do you think better. that someone... Just needs to like punch you in the face. I'm telling you, it feels like, like my jaw's dislocated, and yes, that it just needs yeah. to be just a good. So I'm just crack. like uppercut you. Ryu needs to come over to your place and give you an uppercut, yeah. <laughs> and just snap it back into place again. <laughs> uh, Jared, I noticed something uh, last podcast, and I don't know how long it's been there, but I went. Jared's got a gamer chair. Oh yeah, I do yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good too. It's um, it's a uh, I'll slide sideways. Wait, did so? Did did we get a sponsorship that I didn't know about? No, this is just from Costco, man. <laughs> I just needed. I had this really bad and bad ergonomic chair from um, uh, IKEA, which I picked up with the standing desk, and it just turned out to be really uncomfortable. So I saw these down at Costco for 199 Australian. I went, okay, I'll have one of them, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty cush. Yeah, yeah nice. it looks pretty cush, and you know, I see all these other youtube youtubers uh with their gamer chairs and uh mm. you know if you own a gamer chair company and you and would sponsor. like me to be sitting in it i'd be happy yeah. to just put yeah. that out there that that's right well you know if if we can get uh onyx uh onyx onto the case you know, this is what this one is <laughs> yeah you know it'd be all right so these ones, it's good. It's got like a headrest and like a lumbar support as well. Yeah. And you can take the armrests off as well, which I have because they sort of like, they're designed, it's definitely not an office ergonomic chair. So normally with an office chair, your arms are sort of like, like that. But with a gamer chair, your arms are actually like this. So you can actually like, you know, do wasp and mouse, you know? Yeah. So it's like designed to have a really wide sort of, um, desktop presence but yeah the the arm the normally with an office chair you can tilt the armrest pads in so yes. that you're actually in type and this one wasn't doing that and it was sort of contoured pads so i had to take them off because they were just uncomfortable to use when i was actually doing my day job you know which is why i got the chair things because you know i'm definitely not an elite youtube um streamer and gamer <laughs> you know so uh i i i'm, I, just, I'm living I, the dream through the chair i laugh the, at how many of these things you know, or in everybody's videos. And I always just am thinking, I'm like, is everybody just buying their own or is everybody just being sponsored by <laughs> these chair companies? But the problem is that from a sponsorship perspective, it's bad because my head's right in the way of the logo, right? So like, it's like... Well, I was going to say, see, the problem is you're not doing what I'm doing, which is slightly sitting on an angle. So yeah, see, if I was like that... It would be, be there. I'd yeah. be really on an angle, though. Like that. <laughs> That'd be really awkward, wouldn't it? Oh, look, I'm wasting and mousing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, if you, face the... th if you face that direction, right? And then and then I faced, if I face this direction, then it would look like we were having a conversation with each other. Hello, Chris. <laughs> I, I have to be looking at my speaker. <laughs> Here, I high can't five. see you. Uh, high five. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Um, so, hey, uh, surprise, folks. We're doing a podcast this week. We did, weren't. Yeah, special. Yeah, we weren't um, we weren't planning on doing this. I haven't even got the uh, audio from the other one out yet, but you know, <laughs> we could probably talk about why that is. 
Um, we will talk uh, about yeah. the, the, the why that is. Um, mm. Like I said, it was a rather a surprise midweek. We kind of went, oh, hey, we should probably do one of these. But um, yeah, you, everything is exploding. Everything's exploding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Console Wars 20 or Cabinet Wars 2020, folks. Uh, mm. But you might have also noticed during the week, if you follow our YouTube channel, that you should. these little uh, mini blockades popped up. Mm. And something we're going to be trying for the next couple of weeks, definitely, uh, which is basically scrunching down the full-size podcast into bite-sized nuggets of, you know, probably 12 minutes or less. Because um, mm. there's been a few people that have left messages to me basically saying, hey... I hate having to search for something through your podcast or mm. I'm not in the habit of spending an hour watching these things, but if it was nice and short, then would go. So last week I did the experiment where basically broke up the entire podcast and posted it. Um, that's not necessarily going to be the regular thing right now. We're trying to figure out what segments you guys are actually interested in watching. Um, like for instance, do you care about this whole opening? <laughs> I'd say probably not. Probably I, not. Probably but you not. Never I mean, know. we like it. We, we like to talk about stuff and things, but probably no one else really cares. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is why we like to break it up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we're looking for feedback, folks. Is there? Um, are you fine with it? Just broken into little chunks. Is there more to it that you would want added on? Graphics or, or you know background music? I don't know. Whatever, because they would be obviously edited. Um, mm. Do you Which want us to do the? Doing on which, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and and we're not we're going to step away from Twitch for a little bit, um, just because mm. we've been having so many technical errors. Guys, just even today, it was trying to get Jared's audio up. Yeah, um, no, which was no fault of Twitch or no fault of uh, uh, the OBS or anything like the usual suspects are. You know, <laughs> this is just completely at my end. Windows just decided to ignore my audio interface that I've got, and I don't know why. So I just switched over to Mac, and everything works because Mac. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the the idea is basically we're going to be doing this for the next uh, I don't know how many weeks um, or how many podcasts that we do. Um, yeah, we're goes. trying something new. Uh, mm. The idea is going to be that once we're done recording here, going to upload it to YouTube as fast as possible and then uh, set it up as a premiere so mm. that uh, then I will be in the comment section live while you guys are watching and you can comment with me and chat. And we did it last week and uh, <laughs> lo and behold, Mel popped in and he even made some comments uh, from Zen. So uh, it's a different way. You're not directly interacting with the show, but yet you'd be still interacting with the show because yeah. then this is... those comments would be saved to YouTube. YouTube. Which is probably more valuable because the thing is, at the moment, it gets saved to Twitch, but no one sees it. Yeah. Um, whereas you're on record when you're on YouTube, and that's you know, some people may like that, some people may not. So you know, um, we'll see. <laughs> yep. So again, that's what we're that's what we're trying. We're trying to uh, change things up. Obviously, we're looking to grow our uh, we're looking to grow the audience. Um, the audience that we do have is. Very loyal. I mean, man, Very we loyal. post a video, the this podcast, and probably about half of our subscribers watch it within the first day. So Yeah, which is um, so awesome. It is. That's incredible. Uh, we just want more subscribers. Mm. <laughs> exactly. And, and why might you think that we want more subscribers? Because we would love to be able to cover more content, uh, but... I'm like with all these cabinet stuff and yeah, this is where we're going today, folks. Once again, uh, with all the cabinet mm -hmm. stuff, uh, if you actually want us to physically try and deal with these things, well, we kind of need more viewers so that then that can, we can actually monetize from YouTube and buy, that buy we can actually buy these things and, you know, yeah. more viewers. Money doesn't content. grow on trees. Yeah. Mm, money you know. doesn't grow on trees, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> so we have to get it somehow. Um, we're even we're even thinking about maybe finally after all these years opening up a Patreon. We just don't quite mm. know uh, the details of what we would do for that because I don't know about bonus content that we even have any. <laughs> well, look, you know, if you if you become a patron, you'll absolutely get the pre-show warm up. You know? <laughs> absolutely, you'd get the pre-show warm up. You'll get absolutely. you'll get that pre-show warm up. So that we're not totally sure you're actually wanting here, but you, you'll get it. <laughs> It's a very exclusive benefit. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. So, what do you say, folks? We dive in with... Uh, hey, Volume 6 came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... yeah, it is. It's out. Yeah, it's out. And people have had a chance to play it and enjoy it a little bit. And one thing that I noticed was, because I haven't been playing the mobile app, because I may have mentioned this before, I typically play the mobile app just to earn table parts. <laughs> and yes. once I've earned all the table parts, then I don't really have any purpose of playing the mobile app Not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, bam, here we go. Limited time event popped up, 14 days, uh, where basically I think it refreshes every six hours or so. And mm. you're able to do these challenges, you know, so it's five minute survival or one ball. And your reward is table parts for the new volume. So I, in five days, I've already got all three of my tables up to two stars. That's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. what I forgot and I'm realizing is that the reason why I like the challenges, uh, not so much the one ball, but definitely with the, the other two, is it's unlimited balls. And therefore, a table like Space Station becomes so much more or less frustrating mm. while I'm still trying to meet a goal, but I start actually learning the shots and learning the yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whereas I was saying that I didn't think I liked place, uh, Space Station at all, it's growing on me now. It's It's one of those sort of tables that... When you walk up to it, it's not really that approachable, is it? No. Um, it you know it's hard to get that ball under control, and it's it's hard to sort of get your head around what you need to do because the the one thing that's probably you know as you as it grows on you an advantage to the table is that the the way you actually lock the balls it's actually for its era quite quite complex. Like you know you've got to shoot a shot and then it diverts it around the back and. That's sort of a bit of a surprise when you first play it. And then, you know, you've got a shot that, um, you know, shoot behind the the top rollovers and it, like, sort of shoots it down a rail into the front of the play field. Like, it's... The balls really do go everywhere on that table. So... And I still you know, have yet to figure out where the scoring is on it. Um, it's not exactly obvious as from what I'm gathering, but I also haven't sat down and, you know, even so much as read the apron card. The scoring on Space Shuttle is really in multi-ball and get your jackpot. And it, it's not a big jackpot either. Like it's, it's you know, I think about maybe a couple of hundred thousand points. Um, okay. But, you know, on that table, it makes a difference. So you've got to basically get the game into multi-ball and then um, you've got to relock the balls as it's telling you to do. And then once you've relocked the balls, that'll also get you the, uh, the table achievement for that uh, title as well. So you get the jackpot. Getting the jackpot gets you the um, the table achievement for Space Shuttle, um, which I've done. So, yeah, that's that's really where the points are. Everything else is pretty pretty much chopping wood, really. Which is where it becomes very balls. difficult in survival mode because mm. if you blow it like I do all the time on <laughs> after locking the balls and not getting a jackpot, it's hard to beat survival. <laughs> It really is, yeah. It's you've got to. It's such a low-scoring game that you've got to, you've got to keep the score flowing. Otherwise, it's yeah, you're dead pretty quick. Yeah. Um, mm. The other two tables with uh, Doctor Dude. I'm realizing that I used to rag on Doctor Dude as kind of like a eh, who really likes this table, and then I realized mm. that it's just because I didn't really care for Party Zone, and I kind yes. of equate the two with each other, and mm. I do really like Doctor Dude. <laughs> Doctor Dude's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, I think um, the thing I'm finding with uh, Zen's version of it is in just regular Zen physics mode, um, it's a bit drainy out of the center. So mm. when you shoot the ball up the middle, um, it rattles around the pop bumpers. If it almost feels like there's, it's it's not a railroad because Zen doesn't do that, but it almost feels like a railroad, but a bad railroad in that it'll just drop down the middle of the flippers every single time for me. I had to do it five times in a row. I didn't even get a flip Wow! on, on the ball. And it was just, yeah, but in um, uh, the classic physics, it doesn't. I'm so, kind of having that with uh, Space Station. When you do lock the two balls and they eject again out the middle, uh, oh, this yes. is on mobile, uh, so mm. technically Zen physics mode, a lot of immediate center drains with no chance of you hitting it with the flipper. Hmm. I, I haven't experienced it on mobile yet. Um, I sort of 
I, I kind of gave up a bit on the mobile. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not really for me. But um, yeah, I, I'd imagine that it, it also coupled with the fact you can't really tilt on mobile either. True. It sort of um, makes it hard. Um, so yeah, it makes it tricky. hard. But I've never been much of a nudger anyway, so it's not uh, mm. like I'm really missing much. <laughs> It's true. I don't really tend to nudge that much in Zen. Like maybe if it's like if it's going to be a catastrophic drain or it's around the outlet. Right. Yeah. If, it, if it's completely obvious it's going to go, then and not on mobile do I ever. But with when I'm playing uh, on my PC, that that's when I'll actually yeah. nudge it. But I see other players like you'll watch their streams and they are Constantly nudging moving. non-stop. Like, uh, 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 uh. The tables yeah. like this all the time. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you must have it down. Like I think you can set the tilt sensitivity down so. It will really never ever register a tilt, yeah. but it will still nudge the ball. Um, so you can do like a full stick movement, and it'll only just like move the table a little bit, and you won't get triggered. So I think that's how they set it up. So I'm curious uh, what people are thinking of the uh, enhanced visuals. Because um, mm. for my money, Doctor Dude wins. Oh yeah, uh, Space Station is kind of can take it or leave it um obviously in multi-ball mm. when you got the space shuttles flying around it can be a little bit annoying blocking the the side of the ball and mm. funhouse i don't like the enhanced at all no it's not not a lot on funhouse that i really enjoy um space shuttle i think it really does take um that's the actual space station sorry space station not space shuttle i know the space <laughs> station area so easy to switch between the two um but yeah, the space station area where the uh, diverter mechanism is, mm -hmm. is pretty bland on the real table. And having that nicely rendered space station spinning around, yeah, it actually does add to the aesthetics of the game quite a lot, actually. Um, the the shuttles floating air in the air, as I said way back when, when we were doing the um, beta testing on it, um, I did provide feedback that they do obscure the top lanes if you have a certain view angle on. But um, if you're playing in portrait mode on your PC and you've got like view one W or something like that, it's not an issue. Yeah. Um, but some console um, folks, when it comes out on console, may find that there's some view angles where enhanced mode, just, you, you are blocked at the top there. Um, so yeah, just just find one that feels right for you and um, do a bit of experimentation. Yeah, I'm curious also to know, uh, and I've seen some people already dropping feedback, but there were those that... Um... Are unfamiliar with this era of table completely never having played mm. it in real life never seen it yeah. yeah never seen it and we're worried that these were going to be boring and um not a lot to do not deep and so i'm yeah. curious once people have given them a shot and played them a significant significant amount um how their opinion changes if at all or do they just go eh, don't like these at all yeah, it's going to be interesting because this is not a typical game that the Zen audience would probably be used to, um, like a typical Zen audience, like pre Billy Williams. So yeah. it it may be a bit of a um, a bit of a, a shock to them. But like I said, this whole play. era is very much it's it's very it's much not about starting only. modes; it's about aiming and shooting specific targets. It is, and it really boils down a lot of the time to multiple. Like that's what they want you to get to. Yes. Um, multi-ball in these games is almost considered like the wizard mode because it's hard to get to in some cases. Um, certainly in Space Station, it's not. Um, it's pretty easy to to access it, but in Dr. Dude, it takes a bit of build-up. You've got to shoot the ball around a fair few things to get um, the two-ball multi-ball started in Dude mode. So, you know, it's risky to, to get it going. And they are drain monsters, this era of table, so... Which is what yeah, I like yeah. about Doctor Dude, not being the drain monster, but the uh, the needing to shoot a variety of shots. Yeah, it's not it's just not one, just a like, one ramp table. Yeah, you know, or like you know, do these drop targets and then shoot the ramp. You know, it's good because you are exploring the table that way, and yeah. the, it actually you know the the way you explore the table, all the shots and geometry change as you play through it. You know, so it, it does keep the table fresh. I think from that perspective, because you are having to explore the table and shoot around at different angles. Um, it's definitely a marksman's game. Um, yeah. You got to shoot around and, and be accurate in your shots, otherwise you'll break and you'll die. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm I'm excited. Um, I think they did a, a as usual fantastic job with the visuals. Um, mm. The yeah, score displays happily work 
wonderfully in <laughs> cabinet mode. I can, I can really see the um, the effort they put into those score displays. Like the way that they've, I don't know how they've done it, but they've integrated the view selector into the score display. Yes. And that's that's an, uh, that's another level of integration altogether. Like that's outside of the ROM. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, Jared's uh, got a visitor. I do have a visitor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's <laughs> there's where I um we're scheduled at the moment to have uh Mel from Zen. He's the uh, COO of Zen Studios. Uh, he's scheduled to come in with us next week. And hopefully he can shed some light on uh, those technical difficulties of dealing with the display. Because clearly, if they were able to integrate uh, view displays, view displays, like... things that are Zen completely Zen centric and were never in the the ROM to begin with, um, it's, I, I just if this is the reason why it's taken so long for them to do it, then okay. I will let them off yeah. because that is, I, I just don't know. And that's not that's... to say that this release was, it had a lot of problems on day one um, that mm. they were quickly trying to address. But for me, the the uh, game was crashing right off the bat. Couldn't even get into it. And it had to do with me in cabinet mode going full screen. And the only way around it was to go uh, full screen windowed. And then it worked. Um, and oh, then wow. they fixed it within yeah. a day and the next day it was all fine and dandy, but, um, people are, there's some audio issues with the, uh, audio slider, uh, that, uh, and it might be, I, I don't know if you were the one that mentioned it or somebody else mentioned it, but it might be just be because there weren't three different parameters of audio on these ROM sets. It was no. sound effects were tied into music effects. Um, yeah, there was all just yeah one stream basically. It was just a massive MIDI stream just being pumped out to the speakers. Yeah, um, and even I to the point even... that that this wasn't loaded up into Steam until the day of. Like yeah, it was... usually it's preloaded and it just needs to be unlocked, and it wasn't loaded until the day of. Yeah, they literally got the keys to us on zero day. Yeah, um, for <laughs> not the evaluation keys for the the actual production version, which yeah. is. It's, it's, we've never had that. Like it has been, like probably a week before, um, so you can actually start streaming it. Yeah. Um, but no, it was day day zero. These keys were available, and you could tell that they were really stressed out, like uh, getting these things up. So yeah, it's a. Uh, but I just know I'm, I'm excited for whatever comes next. I'm assuming that we're going to get some more alphanumerics next. I think they will want to capitalize on the investment to date, and they will probably start releasing alphanumerics pretty like fast now. Yeah, and now that they've got the got, kinks worked out, I think they do. Yeah, so they've got they've got all the actual engineering side of thing worked out now. So they should, you know, be able to go back to regular cadence now and start, you know, releasing um, more tables um, faster. So yeah, I think so. I more, think we're in faster, for a, more faster. That's right. I think it'll be good. I think we're we're in for like a steady stream now. That's my that's my pick, I reckon. Here's hoping. Okay. Moving forward. The reason why we needed to actually do the podcast this week. Because we were gonna save that you know, volume six stuff for next week, but mm. why did we need to come on this week? Well, we needed to come on this week because at games finally released their info on the Legends pinball cabinet. They did. And we have now at least a render of a picture, and we have specs and price and tentative release dates and all that. So this is where we're going to dive in a little bit on this. And then we'll dive into something else afterwards that just amused us to no end. Okay, so first things first. Why don't we go ahead and let me... Uh, let me show a picture of this bad boy, if I can. And I think we're going to... Nope, that's not the image that I wanted. I thought I was all prepped. How did I not get prepped, Jared? New there York it is. There it is. There it is. That would be the Legends Pinball uh, cabinet render that they had. And I keep on saying render because this isn't the uh, finalized product. But you can bet it's probably very, very close. Pretty close, yeah. Pretty close. Um... And just uh, just for the sake of doing this, 
And why is that still showing? Go away. There it is. So there's the four cabinets. So uh, last week we showed you this also, but we had the Guns N' Roses cabinet in there. This week we have it with there. So uh, price point on Legends Pinball is $5.99. And then $4.99 for the Marvel Pinball cab from Arcade 1-Up. Well played games with their Zacharia pinball machine at four ninety nine, and then Haunted House from well not Haunted House, uh, the Gottlieb twelve and one from Toy Shock is at three ninety nine. Although when they come out with their two point version, I think that's going to be up near four fifty or maybe four ninety nine. Also, um, mm, we just I haven't so. really heard anything about that. No, they're keeping very tight-lipped about what's going on there. I haven't heard any anything in all the Facebook forums that I've um, been sniffing around in. Yeah. So, yeah, nothing on that yet. So the some of the things to be aware of with this uh, cabinet, um, it is almost a full-size cab compared to a regular pinball. They're uh, saying that it's 80 to 90% full-size. It's certainly taller than the other cabs. Um, larger dimensions. Part of that larger dimension is that they're using a 32-inch uh, uh, monitor instead of a 24-inch monitor that the uh, other three are all using. They're also using in their back glass a 15-and-a-half-inch uh, LCD monitor. Um, nobody, uh, nobody else in this group has a, a video monitor. Uh, Arcade 1-Up obviously has their DMD monitor, but it's not meant for displaying uh, cabinet art. Uh, by no. stretch of the imagination. No. Um, that's the kind of the the primary difference for the reason for the size. All right, now let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. So give you a little better look. Uh, things to note. Obviously, not a sunken play field. Um, it no. is using a piece of glass over the top. Yes, um, it seems they like made Ar that as a selling point, actually. Yeah, it seems like Arcade 1-Up is the only one that's using uh, acrylic, and there is a question that we, ha I'm going to have to ask is, can we replace the acrylic with our own piece of glass if we want mm. to? That would be a... I hope that that kind of a mod is l allowed, because then you just you know go over to Michael's and the Aaron Brothers inside and say, hey, cut me a piece just of frame glass, and voila! Yeah. <laughs> Done, yeah. Uh, the other thing to note... Uh, that gigantic apron in the front, which... It's pretty hard to miss. Pretty yeah. hard to miss, but you'll notice there is a little uh, D-pad on there. And that's, that's true. That is for, uh, obviously, some navigation purposes. And yeah. from what we're hearing, that whole apron will be removable and be replaceable at some other time with arcade sticks or trackball. Uh, because yes. this is a multi-cade machine, not just pinball. That's right. Yep. Um, you'll notice. So, so I wonder where we've seen that before. Uh, that seems really familiar. <laughs> like this swappable control panel thing at the front. I'm, I'm sure I've seen that somewhere. Might be this company. I don't know. Uh, our, uh, uh, Aardvark? No. Uh, no. No. Austra no, they are in Australia. Oh, yeah. The Arcuda. Arcuda. That's <laughs> the one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> um, the uh, there is a plunger there, obviously, um, and you'll notice it's got the two sets of buttons. So I'm assuming that one of them is for nudging. Although apparently this does have an accelerometer in it, also. Um, yes, it does. I find it interesting that they're not promoting the accelerometer action or the fact that they say that they do have haptic feedback. Whereas Arcade yeah, One Up is right. making that a huge selling feature, so I'm kind of curious to know uh, how those, how these two are differing with that respect. Um, I have a feeling it might be the degree of haptics because it sounds I like I think the Arcade One Up cabinet has really deeply integrated haptics from what we've read and heard. Yeah, and I got a feeling that this might be less so because it's really hard to integrate deeply with haptics when you don't actually have a custom bit of software written to integrate with the haptics very deeply. Correct. So, yeah, I think it'll it'll be there. Like, you'll feel bumps and stuff, but it won't be to the degree that you get on Arcade 1UP. And then, of course, you've got the uh, four buttons on the front, which uh, obviously are for probably another purpose of navigation within this. Um 
let's go ahead and then throw up a comparison of the two. So somebody complained that my <laughs> my my Photoshop job on the other one didn't show the M2 scale. So I tried to scale the table legs because I'm assuming the table legs are the same. Uh, obviously, it's slightly different photographic angle for the one up arcade but i think that gives you a sense of at least the height that there is definitely a height difference um uh, i think mm. the height on the legends pinball i'm trying to find it here it's 67 inches high whereas the arcade one up one is 56 inches high so it's a full foot taller yeah. The um, thing that I'm really looking at with this render, and yes, yeah. this render, take that or leave it, but the that front panel area um, on the at games cabinet is is just really angular, um, and you look at the render on the um, arcade one up cabinet, and it does have slightly curved edges on it like mm -hmm. a real lockdown bar should. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if the final product from At Games will actually address the the edginess to that area because that's not going to be very comfortable playing. I'm also a little bit um, surprised with the At Games cabinet in that the, the corners, the front corners of the lockdown bar actually play a pretty important role with tilting. You actually need your palms in the position of the corners um, to to be able to tilt the machine properly because you need that sort of fulcrum point um, that you can push against. So if you're only resting your arms essentially either side of the cabinet without any sort of horizontal movement points that you can anchor onto, it's going to be really hard to tilt this thing. So um, that will be a factor in play as well, which I'd like to follow more closely. Yeah. I, uh, I think looking at the two of these... I, I don't like how steep the angle is of the Legends Pinball. Um, apparently, there's been they've said that it probably is not going to be that steep of an angle. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's you look at the Marvel one, it pinball. looks like a pinball cab. It's it, got the front it door. It's got the proper amount of material depth. And I'm sure that when they were doing a full size, I mean, if they're doing a practically full size. Uh, machine there just trimming off six to eight inches off the bottom probably saves them quite a significant amount of money um, mm. in materials but it it doesn't look as much like a pinball machine as the other one and then i really do like the sunken play field on the marvel cab um mm. that that it's something that uh vp cabs did on theirs uh, machines also, and I think it just sells the pinball look. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah. The other it thing, does, like, it does give that little bit of depth, and it does it makes it look less like uh, an EM or a early solid state table with the play field right at the top. Yeah. Um, as well. So, but even yeah, even it, those, I mean, and I know that the 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 cab modes of a lot of these. Well, I mean, like Zen is rendering the. The, the mirror well, not the mirror blades but the what do you call that the sides of the, the <laughs> of the cabs the side insides of the cab yeah yeah so uh, I mean that might wind up looking a little weird on the marble cab having like a double depth kind of thing going but I think it does help mm. sell the 3d aspect um, the main thing though that I oh, I can't the, get past the it. thing is the thing is they may not even have those views in there they may actually be... Remember, they have custom written the software for this. Yeah, so you right. can guarantee right. that it, it probably won't even have that in there. It'll just be focused on the play field. But you might even see the character effects in there looking up at you. Because remember, that's a that's a big thing that um, a lot of the our other friends of the show talked about in cabinet mode, where the, 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 the actual rendered characters aren't looking at you. They're looking no. at the front of the play field. Yes, they are. So if they adjust that as well i mean if they've had to do everything else they may as well adjust it as well and have everyone looking up at you addressing you as the like the 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 player that would be pretty that would be better than having any sort of side art or anything like that yeah uh speaking of art i'm sorry but that artwork on the legends cab is hideous and it's not great it's a problem that i have in general with multicades they try and throw on like 
look at everything that we have, and you just get this hideous collage that is an it's eyesore. It's a bit of a vomit. Yeah. It, it's, it's terrible. I'm sorry. It's just god-awful. Um, and they the funny thing is that brand. some people are sitting there going, oh, well, that's okay. You can just reskin it. Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> what if I'd, I didn't rather... want to pay more money? <laughs> yeah, just give me like a... just. Yeah, with the other Legends Ultimate Cabinets, they're just black with the Legends, Legends brand on it. And yeah. So a few, like, there's a few icons on it, but they're all like sort of just like the icons from the games just sort of laid on, like in, in a stack. Wasn't form, that what what, uh, what Virtual Pin was doing also? Mm, I think so. Yeah. So it's sort of like, why, why wouldn't you just go with something simple like that? Like, I don't know. It's It seems unusual. It does, but then again, maybe it'll you know look perfectly fine next to your other multi-cade full-size cabs. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it may be fine. Yeah. Or you know maybe you just take it out of the box, go meh, meh, and then just focus on the games. You know, because that's <laughs> the thing as well. You know, because yeah, the thing is, if you have this it's wedged between other things, you won't even see the side art. See it. So. Except for you'll still see that apron, which you, you is well, still the, more vomit. That is the render. Of the apron, that like is true. Probably, if it's going to be a swappable control panel, then that will really not matter. That's just essentially a, a dummy sort of placeholder, not so much a placeholder image, but like a um, uh, essentially a shield that you'll most likely replace with a control panel anyhow. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, so what other things should you probably want to know? Um, like I said, we said that it apparently has it. They're saying that it has haptic feedback, that it uh, does have an accelerometer. Um, mm -hmm. They're saying that it's going to be uh, running in 1080p at 60 frames per second. Yeah. Um, we know that that the Arcade 1-Up cab is supposed to be running at 60 frames, but I don't know if it's 1080p or 720. Um, mm -hmm. That I'm not 100% sure on. Um like I said, there's uh, the Legends Pinball has the glass as opposed to the acrylic. And then you've got the uh, size factor. Both of them have the adjustable legs, which is just the, uh, uh, the little footies on the bottom that'll basically give you two inches of rise um, yep. for that kind of purpose. And then you get all the other stuff. So here's where... This is what uh, uh, Legends Pinball was really touting. And this is... If if you're familiar with their product, if you have their Legends Arcade, then you're familiar with their BYOG uh, program, Bring Your Own Game, the Arcade Net. Um, they're basically creating an ecosystem uh, with which it doesn't matter if you have the Legends Pinball, the Legends Arcade, the Legends Gamer uh, controller. Um, they're all going to be able to kind of communicate with each other. You're all going to be playing on the same leaderboards. You're all going to be having that same kind of uh, interaction more or less, it's not going to be you just, oh, I've got the pinball machine, so I can only communicate with other people with pinball. Um, yeah. They're creating their own uh, tournaments uh, and leaderboards. Um, so that's all kind of interesting. They're, the game, come, the Legends Pinball comes packed with, currently, it's going to ship with the 22 Gottlieb tables. Now, I made the mistake of thinking of those 22 that the Alvin G's were going to be the ones dropped. Turns out, nope, those are yeah, in. They're in. The two tables yeah. that are not going to be in, Big big Hurt, which is the uh, baseball one, and I, I think yes. that's the only licensed table of the batch. Which yep, kind of makes me go, hmm. And then for some unknown reason, <laughs> the EM version of El Dorado and instead you get the solid state version, El Dorado City of Gold, which me and Jared both think is the craptacular version. Oh, it's the worst. And it's for so many reasons. Well, you know what? I had to remind myself of those reasons today. So I went ahead and I loaded up Pinball Arcade and I first played a couple of games of El Dorado. And I'm like, I like this. Yes, it's an EM, but it's really a shooter's game. You're really uh, having to aim for targets. And the ball moves at a nice leisurely pace like an EM should. I'm like, yeah. cool. I throw in City of Gold, which is, in case you folks don't know, is the 
absolute exact same playfield layout. Everything on it is identical. Yep. It's got the most annoying sounds in the world. <laughs> well, it really does. They changed up the rules because of it being a solid state and it could remember certain things, but there are rule changes that I personally don't like, mainly because all the drop targets along the back, every time you lose a ball, they all pop right back up, whereas the yeah, EMs reset. don't reset. And I, it annoys me you lose a ball with only one target left and all of a sudden, burp, all 10 pop back up and you're like, oh, yeah. all my progress. Yeah, um, it's brutal. Yeah. And then it also plays super fast. Way too fast for that play field. And I don't know if the solid state played that way. Like if all of a sudden they ramped up the strength of the flippers uh, so they could also rake it farther. I don't know. Yeah. There's just nothing that I like about that one compared to regular El Dorado. So I'm kind of sad that, that those are that that's the one that had to go. Yeah, it is disappointing. Like they, they just don't like it kind of shows that they don't get um, the, the final points of pinball. Um, and they look at like I reckon they would have made the decision. Oh, what's more modern? Right. What well, is the EM more modern or is the solid state one more modern? Oh, we'll take the solid state because that will be better. Yeah. Like, well, not necessarily. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe it's just us who likes the the EM and everyone else loves the solid state. But I don't know. Could be. Could be. Uh, yeah. The other thing that um, so those are gonna be native to it when the Taito. Uh, stuff comes out, they say those are going to be downloadable and native also uh, to the to the, uh, to the the cab. Mm. Why is native important? Because obviously then you're not dealing with any latency, it's which streaming. is where I question the next thing. You have the ability to stream your games into the cab. And so they're yeah. advertising with that, that if you own Pinball Arcade, that you can stream all of your stern tables also into it. Yes, Steam only. Steam only, yeah. Mm. Here's the thing. <laughs> Remember, folks, Pimple Arcade didn't have cabinet mode. Mm. What you're streaming is going to be landscape mode. There is no official cabinet mode unless you had the Arcuda cabinet. Yeah. Um, so, so if you had the Arcuda cabinet and paid for the Arcuda cabinet, then I guess you would be able to stream that maybe but otherwise for most people didn't buy that uh so you're going to be playing cabinet in cabinet mode with portrait or excuse me with landscape <laughs> i don't know how that's even going to work the, I, uh, I, I don't know it's not going to look good <laughs> it's not going to be great i think that's what it's going to be maybe maybe you'll be playing that up on the uh, back box 15 and a half inch screen instead i i think that's probably the only way you're going to be able to do it uh, unless they've worked out some way of like flipping monitors or something, but I just don't see how that's going to be possible. Um, something else to to keep in mind too: uh, all these cabs are apparently going to be running some version of Android of these games. Um, yeah. Again, we'll confirm hopefully next week uh, if that is indeed true. If these are upgraded Android ports from uh, Zen. Or, yep. or what the deal is. But definitely for the Farsight tables on the Ad Games cabinet, they are 100% the Android version of yes. those. Um, they also are saying that they're going to have the ability to stream uh, VPX games, and they're going to have a few of those automatically streamable. Um, they're not licensed at all. They're uh, user-created ones. Yeah. But from the pictures that I saw, there was no rhyme or reason as to format. Like some of them look like they're cab mode. Some of them look like they were landscape mode. Um, mm. That'll be kind of interesting. So I think basically it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jared, but my perception of that games is they're appealing to the multi-cade crowd, uh, those that are grabbing their titles from not always the uh, <laughs> legalist of sources. <laughs> that they're, they're the sort of people that, um, the people that I think are using or favor at games are the ones that want to essentially have a little bit more flexibility in what they play and where they get those titles from. Right. 
um and it may so yes of course you can get the, those titles from um, um not so legit sources um but at the same time you can also um obtain them um through stores and stuff like that so rather than having a, a product that's just through one ecosystem or one stream i think at games is about that little bit of extra variety and a little bit of extra consumer choice um in where you get your things from yeah uh and like i said this is also going to be able to play not just pinball um but they're saying you can stream any of the games okay do it. yeah um so it's you almost know, kind of doing a little bit of steam's big picture mode i guess a little bit when yeah. you have the steam box See, I kind of like the idea. Like, I do like the idea of streaming some titles to that vertical screen. So, you know, vertical vertical shoot 'em ups are going to look great on this thing. Like, if you put a controller in that lockdown bar area and you start playing things like Dejong Apache or like Raiden or any of those sort of vertical scrollers, it's going to look awesome on that screen. Yeah, like it's going to be wicked. But you know, that that's that, that's sort of you know what Arcuda was also aiming at as well. Like right. they were looking at that sort of like multiple destination style um uh ecosystem now the so, million dollar question though let's say you go ahead and do stream pinball to your cab is there going to be latency i've got an uh, answer we'll, to that uh because i reached out and the answer is yep there is a little bit yeah. of lag if you don't want the lag you're going to need to hook this thing directly up to your pc via hdmi so yep. that you don't have any lag at all. So that's kind of an issue. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather. So, uh, yeah, that will mean that really, uh, I think most people accept that um, if you want to play pinball, uh, you're not going to be streaming this. You're going to be connecting it somehow up to an existing piece of hardware. Um, and, you know, you do have a number of ways of doing that. HDMI, of course, for video, but you've got the Bluetooth support for the, the way you connect up your PC to what is essentially a controller with screens, um, which is the At Games cabinet. Or you can go direct to USB, or there's there's a number of different ways you can get your controller set up. And yeah. then you may have to go through and remap um, in the game. So there's that as well. So you may be saying to yourself, hey... For 50 bucks more, why wouldn't I buy the At Games but Legends at Pinball? Games. Hmm. Because then, hey, all of my Zen tables could be brought over and I could just play them there. I wouldn't even have to bother with, with that. Oh, but guess mm. what? You'd be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> You'd be that's wrong. That's a nice idea. But uh, yeah, that's there's a little problem, and it's called the EULA, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so as soon as the <laughs> announcements were made with this, uh, Zen went of ahead. Swift actions there, but, <laughs> online. Yeah. Zen went ahead and uh, tweeted out a little something, and I'm going to I'm going to share that with you all. Let's see. We're going to go over here. Hey, look at those. Well, we don't need to see that anymore. What we do want to see, though, is this. This little tweet stream. This little tweet stream. So, Zen writes, To our DIY pinball community thread, we thank you for your continued support to help our uh, games take our games to new heights through your innovative creations. We wanted to let you know we will continue to make our games available on a case-by-case -case basis for your inventions, but we'll draw the line on any non-approved commercial platforms as they may be in breach of existing EULAs. For which I immediately hopped on and said, in other words, uh, don't put FX3 into cabs that earn money or don't put it into cabs that don't have a license with you. Because, hmm, were they talking indeed about... Uh, at games, at games. Here. And mm. the response then from Mel, entirely and unequivocally <laughs> directed at at games gaming, and I know they see this and know what I am saying. <laughs> <laughs> just wow. in case you were wondering uh, that, that yeah. left nothing to be uh, <laughs> to be questioned it was like slap <laughs> yeah this is directly at you this is an open letter basically only to you <laughs> and then <laughs> at game and then it even gets better because after I said uh, thanks for qualifying or clarifying um, Mel yeah. continues if there's any question about it at games is not very smart <laughs> 
And so yep. I said they need to put some ice on that burn because yeah, damn, that's that's a solid <laughs> burn. That's that's they're not stuffing around. No, right? that was yeah. it's like hello. So clearly, Zen went, hey, competition. Uh, no, no, we don't want it's people like, doing that. Competition's great if they play by the rules. If they play by the rules. Yeah. And they said that all along. Remember our interview with uh, John D and Mel ages ago when we were talking about um, uh, cabinets in general. And they said, you know, it'd be really nice if everyone just played by the rules. And that was way back then. So they knew all the way back then that this was probably going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. And they had a prepared statement ready to go as soon as they saw the news. They would have been sitting on this until such time as they announced. And if I'm not mistaken, currently the only people that have license with Zen would be Arcade One Up and VP Cabs. Um, I hmm. don't know if they're still available that full size uh, virtual cab, the, other sure than either. VP Cabs. I can't remember what it was, uh, was it USA Vertigo Pinball or something like that. Yeah, they had like the Vertigo. Cabinet. No, that's VB Cabs has Vertigo and has a yeah. regular full size, but there was one mm. other company that um, uh, was making it. Uh, oh, yes. And I'm not 100% sure if that still is in existence. Uh, we can clarify that with, with Mel also. Yep. Um, but yeah, so me and Jared decided maybe we should uh, take a look at the old EULA and see what yeah. it actually says. So yeah, put you know, on your lawyer caps, nothing... folks. And yeah, we should caveat this this uh, discussion right up front, saying that we are not lawyers. <laughs> this is not an official analysis of the EULA for at games benefit. Not but we're, we're really, really good at speculating. Now. <laughs> so what we did is we dumped the the EULA into a Google Doc, and we started looking for key terms like non commercial and uh, like other terms like that. And there was a fair few mentions of non commercial. Uh, in this EULA that you all sign when you uh, start playing the game. Uh, it's but the same none of us ever anybody. read. <laughs> no. So now, by virtue of this whole conversation, you now get to look at the pertinent parts of the EULA with us to get a little fireside EULA chat. Yay! So here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. All this right, is not folks. what you were expecting, probably. But hey, look at that. It, it is the Zen Eula. Well, let's just skip through some of this until we actually get into something that... Uh, oh, Where's hey, look worth, at this. Worth. Licenses. Oh, look software license. Particularly, one copy of the software for your personal, non-commercial non use for gameplay on yes. a single computer device or gaming unit. Hmm. Hmm. So... <laughs> so... One how copy of streaming... software... On a yeah. single, for use on a single computer device or a gaming unit. Now, obviously, if you're using Steam, you can use Steam on multiple computers, but you can't use Steam at the same time on multiple computers. It's only ever mm -hmm. one at a time. So, yes, yeah. you could have the software loaded on you know, your laptop and on Eight your own PC. Boxes. Yeah, but you can only play the game on one device. Exactly. So that was the that was the first thing that stood out to us. Let's uh, let's keep mm. on going here. Um, yeah. Then we get here to oh service license. There is the idea of non commercial use, uh, and then the uh, licensing terms that we accept uh, is that the uh, installer otherwise use of software and or services and ends on the earlier date of either your disposal of the software and or services or ends termination of this EULA. Your license terminates immediately if you attempt to circumvent any technical protection measures used in connection with the software and or services or you otherwise use the software and or services in breach of the terms of the EULA. So and again, if Zen has put in factors that don't want it to be streamed or transmitted to some other device and you choose to do that, then you would be in violation of the EULA. Mm. My understanding, now some people were saying, how is it that uh, at games would be in violation? And I don't think any of this is necessarily at games being in violation. I think it's warning that you, the user, could be in violation. And you may be asking, well, how is Zen going to ever know that I'm in violation of this? Well, one of the key features of at games is the ability to stream directly off their unit mm. uh, for content creators. And, and I imagine that would be a giant red flag. 
there's actually a clause in the Euler, which we'll get to, directly aimed at cre like creating yep. your own content from the game. So let's let's, let's keep on going, folks. One. Here we go. <laughs> more, 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 more. That's down further. We haven't even got past the first couple of pages. No, yet. we haven't. <laughs> we okay, let's see what this says. You shall not use the Zen services in any manner likely to cause confusion or doubt in the mind of the public as to the ownership and control thereof, or in any manner that does not make clear the Zen services are owned and controlled exclusively by Zen and its licensors. So again, heavy emphasis on licensors. Licensors. There. Licensors being VP cabs, being arcade one up. Yes. Not being at games. <laughs> mm. So if as you, far as we're aware, as far as we're aware, but, so if you are causing confusion in terms of what you're oh, we're offering on, FX3 on this cabinet, it's fully supported. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. And where where some of the at games announcements got into trouble was where they said, "Yes, you'll be able to stream Zen to it." Yeah. Uh, I thought it was interesting that. At games specifically said, you can play Bally and Williams titles so long as you own them prior on uh, Pinball Arcade. But I thought I was like, I wonder if the mere mention of the Bally and Williams that that they're not even allowed to that's say confusion. that. That's confusion. Well, that's confusion. Because you know the license holder currently is Zen Studios. Yes. So if the you know. That's again a point of confusion. So that's and at games is planning on doing uh, leaderboards, and they gave a number. I think it was thirty-eight tables that will have the leaderboards on them. And if you do the math, that's all the Stern and all the Gottlieb, none of the Williams mm -hmm. and Bally's. So uh, obviously they knew enough not to go that route. Um, but anyway, let's dive some more. Here we go. General licensing conditions. Uh, you agree not to commercially exploit the Zen services, distribute, lease, license, sell, rent, lend, convey, or otherwise transfer or assign the Zen services, any copies thereof, or any passwords, usernames of Zen services without the express prior written cons consent of Zen set forth in this EULA. Um, and for online use or on more than one computer or gaming unit at the same time. Again, that's kind of uh, that's general legal talk that we figured, but Hey, yeah. any commercial use is prohibited. Um, blah, blah, blah. I think that... You can read it. Like, it's basically saying anything where you're getting money for this service. Exactly. So um, don't put it onto a cab that can accept quarters. <laughs> yeah, don't. Unless it's been explicitly discussed right. with Zen prior to doing so. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like the machines that they're putting into your Dave & Buster's. And Dave & Buster's. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so again, that's just kind of the general, I'm sure that everybody's EULA looks exactly like that. Um, mm. user generated content. Here we go. You represent and warrant that any user generated content you provide does not and will not violate any third party intellectual property rights. That right there, again, third party, there's arcade one up. If you're streaming and it's not being using uh, theirs or Steam's or PlayStation's or Xbox's, you're going to be in violation. Mm -hmm. uh, then you may not upload or post any user-generated content that infringes the copyright, trademark, or other intellectual property rights of a third party, nor may you upload any UGC that violates any third party's right of privacy or right of publicity. Again, mm. who knew all this was in here back in, I think this is from 2014? Yeah. 2014, 2015. Ding. Lawyers, they cover their bases, don't they? <laughs> they don't muck around. They don't no. muck around. Um, no. Keep on going, because at some point, it's going to make sense why this actually affects you. Um, ah, here we go. Zen may suspend, terminate, modify, or delete any Zen account at any time for any reason or for no reason. Hmm. Because so, you don't actually own the software. You are leasing the software. That's like the very first thing that the uh, the EULA says. Um, hmm. You're leasing it. And so at any time, they can go, mm, nope. It's yeah, gone. No. See ya. See yeah. ya. So again, this comes down to, if you are publicly making it obvious that you are playing this on something like the Legends Pinball, and Zen finds out, they can go, 
you don't have rights to play this game anymore. And he yanked You embraced your Eula and you have. no more. This is why you can't have nice things anymore. <laughs> more, more, more. Uh, payments of virtual, any and all virtual goods are licensed to you on limited personal, non transferable, non sub licensable, and revocable basis and limited only for non commercial use. Again, that's kind of standard. Um, yep. what you'll find in these things scrolling down some more blah 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 see there's this yes I actually read all this I can't believe I read all this it gets painfully and, boring <laughs> and it's, it's different it's very interesting because that's all in capitals yep, and the right? rest of it's in, in sentence case so that's unusual in itself right terms concerning platform operators provided that you comply with the terms of this EULA you are acquiring and Zen grants you a personal limited non-exclusive and non-transferable license to install and use the Zen services on authorized devices for personal non-commercial use mm. that's basically saying that when you say, hey, Zen, I want a cab mode, and they ask for the photo so that you can show them what you plan on playing this on, that they have the right to go, mm, yeah, we're cool with that, or mm, no, sorry, not nah. that. Yeah. And as Mel's tweet said, specifically, yeah, we're aiming this directly at <laughs> the yeah. the Arcade's Legend. Uh, the Arcade's Legend. The Legend Spinball. Yeah. Okay, we're almost done with these, uh, all this lawyer talk. Uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. Where is the next batch of fun? Uh, at least I think there's some, something else. Oh, no, you, you know what? We reached the end. How about that? We're that done. was it. That was it. So there you go. It wasn't that bad, was it, folks? <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking, oh, you're like, Geo. <laughs> I hope Joe put some skip marks in this segment. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's interesting to read it because, you know, who really actually reads the EULA? I certainly don't when I sign up for something because, you know, usually you don't need to worry about the license agreement unless you plan on doing something dumb or something wrong. Yeah. So if you're just playing the game for your own personal enjoyment, then you will never be in breach of it. But if you're doing stuff slightly on the edges, then you might want to just reread that EULA. Um, I mean, the short and skinny of it around. is Zen is not going to grant you the cabinet license if you or sh taking a picture of this and saying, this is what I'm planning on playing it on. Just know that straight mm -hmm. up. Not going to happen. Yeah. For That's you people mode. that are streaming and uh, are streaming your content, and it's known that you're using the Legends. The streaming pinball. functionality of Legends. That's yeah. a no as well. That's going to be a no-no as well. And I'm going to tell you right now, Zen is, and <laughs> believe it or not, Zen ain't the only one that's monitoring uh, a lot of these uh, announcement videos and podcasts. Um, we said it, it's a game of chicken right now, and yeah. everybody's now put their cards on the table, and everybody's paying attention to everybody else. They want to know what the pricing is, they want to know what the release strategy is, they want to know what the um, you know, pros and cons of each are in yeah. comparison to their competitor. They're basically looking at all the announcements, and they're like, it would be silly for us not to suggest that they're all going, all right, what's our Gen 2 going to look like? But yeah. that's what they're doing right now. They're going, if they haven't already started, which would probably be naive of me to think, they're definitely going, what change to the build of materials do we need to make to remain competitive mm -hmm. with Gen 2? And I even For saw sure. on uh, uh, Retro Ralph's YouTube, uh, it was like, I think it's uh, Arcade 1-Up Weekly. Anyway, they had John mm -hmm. D on. And yeah. uh, they specifically asked him about, hey, what do you think about you know the competition, uh, especially, specifically the... Wi-Fi capability of being able to download more games. And what John had said was that, uh, look, this is our wave one. We think it's going to do good and may... Maybe... May result in more. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. But just like complete brain fart there. Yeah, may result in other tabs <laughs> coming out. Um, and it, maybe those will have Wi-Fi, he said. But the these cabs do have a micro USB port on them. Uh, previously, they were saying that they started installing those in all of the arcade one-up cabs for the purpose of, rather than having to send out new boards, they could just firmware upgrade. Firmware updates. Yeah. yeah. And that if they came out with, say, another Star Wars cab that now you could download the remaining Star Wars tables on them, that via USB, you would be able to uh, Update do this on the, on the Gen 1. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Which... 
and this is you know question for whenever the next time we get John D to actually grace our presence, but would it be a situation where you bought the Star Wars cab and it would just be the remaining Star Wars tables that you would be able to download? And if you bought mm. the Marvel cab, it would just be the remaining Marvels. And then if you bought the uh, Attack from Mars Bally cab, Williams. it would just be the Bally Williams. Or mm. would it start being you can just buy pick and choose and have it Anything. be a giant multi -cade? I think they need to keep it on brand. I do too. Uh, I think it's going to definitely be on happy. brand. Yeah, they need to do it for the licensors. Uh, to to make him happy, I think. And I, I so. he also mentioned that they are trying to hammer out a deal with Universal. So hmm. hopefully that goes through, so they can get a Universal cab out there. My hope would yeah. be that they hammer out a deal with Fox, so we can get an Aliens cab because that's what I would want. <laughs> Wouldn't, you? Wouldn't that be nice? That would be play. that would be pretty special. I yeah. don't have a lot of confidence that we'll ever see. A Zen Originals cab. I just don't think there'd be the demand for it. Um, they need to do a lot of work on those older tables as well to make that something that I would actually want to pay money for. Because... Well, but it's also something. And okay, so there there turns out to be, and we're learning this with. I again learned it from that uh, same thing from Retro Ralph. The arcade one up makes the cabs and presents them to the retailers, and the retailers go yeah, we want to put that in, or yeah, we don't think that's going to sell. Mm. And a, then that winds up surprising retailers. So they were talking about the Golden Axe uh, cab. Retailers weren't interested. They threw it up on the Arcade 1-Up website for sale there and blew them out. And then the retailers went, you know what? Oh, Maybe we do those. want those. <laughs> yeah, we would like a little slice of that pie, thanks. And yeah. not only did they then say, okay, fine, you can have that, but then they wound up being $100 more because that's the fee that a retailer charges. So in terms of the uh, pinball cabs from Arcade 1-Up, the, 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 the uh, Marvel pinball is going to be GameStop and... Uh, I think Best Buy. Best Buy, okay. Star Wars is going to be Walmart. Attack from Mars is going to be dot .com only from Arcade 1-Up. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that the Attack from Mars table is only going to be $500 instead of the... Uh, wait, is that what my price point is? Yeah, 500 instead of the 550 Um, Why do you think that? Because they're not having to... Uh, Retailer not hey, having Marvel. to get their cut. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So mm. we'll have to see. Get your pre-orders in if you're uh, really down for that. We'll find out <laughs> exactly from when what that's I've all. Been reading, from what I've been reading online, that's the one that everyone wants anyhow. Like, they want these Belly Williams tables. I'm torn. On... I'm oh, torn I... because, honestly, I... And this is me basing it off of the idea of me having this Street Fighter 2 cab there. Uh, it's not something that I ever wanted to play on my PC, so I didn't have... Mm. It was just like didn't interest me. But having it sitting there right there, it interests me. Mm. Um, when I play Zen, I always go straight to the Bally Williams tables. I don't really play much of the other stuff. But if all of a sudden I had a cab that was nothing but Marvel tables, I'd probably all of a sudden find myself playing a lot of Marvel pinball. Um, you think... So you reckon it would actually draw you into that that ecosystem that you it would. just don't normally gravitate towards. And But yeah. then there's the problem of I like the Star Wars cab better because I think it's more timeless in whatever room you put it in. Mm. But I don't like the Star Wars tables as much as I like the marble tables. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I too want the, <laughs> the Bally Williams one more than anything. Yeah, out there because so. it's just got it's got the street appeal. Like it's, it like if you, you see these in arcades, yeah. So you, you don't see the marble and you don't see um, the the Star Wars tables anywhere, uh, apart from alleged probably Dave and Buster's, but <laughs> only by virtue of Zen putting them in a cabinet there. Um, but you know, if you were able to get these tables in your house on a thing that takes you know next to no, no time to warm up like that's what i'd be wanting in my lounge room really mm. on a long-term basis 
I probably also enjoy, like you, getting the Marvel tables and actually just having them there just so I could switch on and play. And I can guarantee you that my kids would also really like those tables mm-hmm. being accessible to them as well. They would have a ball. Yeah. So, you know, there's... In classic arcade one-up style, it'd be a threesome for sure. <laughs> like, you'd have to make room for three, right? So, yeah. So there's a... You may be wondering why uh, our... Cabinet Wars 2020 didn't feature the Toy Shock and Well Played cabs. Um, I honestly, really I think, think it's a running. different class. Those are more yeah. aimed at kids and not yeah. adult kids. <laughs> yeah. Not big kids like you and I. Yeah. Um, yeah. But clearly, all four of these are going to have their specific uh, customer base. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I sure. don't think there's any question about that. So. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what transpires. But like I said, we're we're planning on having Mel on next week, so we mm. can uh, after now that we've had our we're not lawyers, but we're going to go through the lawyer act uh, yeah. <laughs> talk. Maybe Mel can clear up some of this and make it clear as a bell. Um, yeah, probably help us, you know, undurp some of the <laughs> interpretations that we actually made from that year. Because I'm sure I'm sure we're wrong on some of the, the points there, but it's our best guess as yeah. to based on the Twitter conversation, what that, you know, what they might have been in breach of, allegedly. Uh, that being said, if you, our fine listeners, have any questions that uh, you would like us to bring up with Mel next week, like I said, it won't be live again. It'll be uh, uh, us doing pre-recorded and then posting it up to, to YouTube. So you won't be able to ask him live questions in that fashion. But if you wanted to, uh, if there's anything in particular you want us to approach an angle, I know we, we tend to cover a lot of the things that you guys were going to ask anyway, but uh, drop us a note. Go on to our uh, go on to our Twitter at Blockade. Lend us any uh, any any clue of what it is that you want to hear from Mel, yeah, so that some, we can pass that some along. Questions with notice, basically, and exactly. we'll, we'll try and get them in. Try and get them answered for you. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you can also obviously uh, email us. The our email is uh, in the link below. And uh, yeah. Should be good. But should be t- awesome. Yeah. Number one, it's really nice to have Mel and uh, John on. They uh, they make uh, conversations flow generally pretty well with them both on. So it's going to be a good show. Wait, are you saying that we're going to have John on too? I don't know. Are we? I don't Hopefully. know. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Last time we asked for Mel and all of a sudden he brought John along. So maybe he'll bring That's John right. along That's right. He again. just chopped in, didn't he? <laughs> Dude, we really hope we can get him on though. I hope. That'll be that'll be awesome. If it was really him. awesome. It was. To, to have him on. Um, yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to see. Hey how John, to... you want to come on the show? <laughs> come, come on the show. It'll be fun, just like old times. We'll ask you some Eula questions. Um... Yeah, you'll love it. <laughs> you'll love it. <laughs> oh God, uh... don't go there, Jared. Um... <laughs> I'll go there. I'm full of puns. That's what, All that's right, what so... the services they offer. So there you go, folks. That's what the uh, that's what the plan is. That's what uh, we'll be back next week, obviously. Um, and it won't even be full of Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. It'll be actually real content. It'll be definitely things. Yeah. And we'll just stuff it. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Until then, folks. We'll stuff it full of things. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye.